Okay, so what we studied last time, uh, we go to, you know, the lecture, the last lecture that we finished. First, we studied the coordinate system that we have 2D coordinate system, and then we have 3D coordinate system, okay? And how does OpenGL work? We said that OpenGL is simulating our eyes. What does that mean? That you have like this, this is, my eye, for example, and I'm looking at something, okay? And then we have a range of view, okay? Now for our eyes, the, the range of view is almost, uh, you know, a long distance, okay? And the things, they have what we call it something like unlimited, okay? But because in computers, we have uh, memory issues, okay frame buffer issues so we need to specify the the range of you know how far we can see okay so the far means that let's say what should be uh, the things beyond which we cannot see so i can define something let's say i can define a room and i will say that if something is inside the walls of the room i will be able to see that if it is behind the wall I will not be able to see that. And this room, it has, you know, four walls, okay? So I'm looking at the wall in front of me. One wall is behind me. One wall is my left side. And the last one is my on, on my right side, okay? And I'm inside the room. Now, in this experiment today, we are going to draw 3D models, which we also studied, and I'm going to show you today, okay? And then those 3D models, we are going to see the effect of uh, weaving. Like for example, here I explain, how do we see them if we move them in the scene? How do we have the effect of different types of projection? So we have seen two types of projection the perspective and orthographic. And with the help of, uh, you know, today's example, we will understand how do they work, okay? So uh, the projection means what? You have something in 3D uh, world, okay? So the real world is 3D, okay? And we need to show it on the screen, which is 2D, okay? So here, this black dot is actually in the 3D world, okay? From our eyes, there is actually a line, imaginary line. Okay, so that is like a ray that goes from our eye to that object. And when we see that thing on the screen, so here you see on the screen, it is drawn here. Now, if we consider another object somewhere above or below this object, so there will be another line from the eye to that object, and it will be drawn at the position where there is an intersection between the line with the that you know um, this boundary okay we will see what are these things but you see that original object may be above okay and on the screen it may be a position a little bit lower okay and it depends like this position will depend how far or how close this object is to this scene okay um so this is actually useful in 3D uh, things. So now we define what is a projection. So a projection is actually the drawing of the things in the 3D world onto this 2D screen, okay? Or it may be in the 2D world, but how do you draw into this 2D screen? This is a projection. Now, um, in OpenGL, you, you see left and right, they are x-axis, from top to bottom, this is Y axis. And then we have Z axis, which goes into the scene and behind the eye, for example. Okay, so how you see the thing. So when you go from your eye into the scene, into the screen, for example, this is negative Z axis. So if we move something into the screen, far from the camera, that is going into the negative Z axis, which means that if we increase uh, or decrease, decrease the value of Z axis, minus one, minus two, minus three, and so on, that will, you know, move the object farther from the screen. And if you are at position zero and you put the object at the position zero, so actually the location of the camera and the object that are at the same position, 
So it will depend how big or how small the object is, whether you are going to see that or not, okay? So consider that you are sitting inside um, a tank or you know there is a table which is at position zero, you are also at position zero. So you will not see the table completely, but you will only see part of it, okay? And depending upon the size, how large or how small is that, and how is the table arranged, you will see it differently, okay? And we are going to see that today, okay? Um, similarly, if you take it uh, on the positive Z axis and you are at zero, so you will not see it at all because that object will be behind the camera, okay? So if you want to see that, you will need to move the camera to positive Z axis so that it is uh, you know, in front of the object, then you will be able to see that. Or another way is to rotate the camera, okay? So if you rotate the camera three, uh, 180 degree, you will be able to see the object which was actually behind you now it will be in front of you. So that we are not going to discuss today, the rotation, but we will see it soon. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, in order to use any 3D object or 3D functions inside OpenGL, we need to enable the GL depth test, okay? So when that is enabled, OpenGL is going to work in 3D. If you don't enable it, if you forget it, you are not going to see that and I will also explain this to you shortly, okay? Now, for 3D, we understand, you know, one thing which is the GLU look at function. And I told you last time that there are three pairs, three actually uh, triplets. So this is one triplet, which means that there are three numbers, then there is another triplet, and then finally there is the third triplet, okay? So <clears throat> what you have is the first triplet is the camera or eye position. So in this three, uh, 3D, your camera is at zero, 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 okay? That is the default if you don't specify. And if you change this position, of course, it's going to change, uh, you know, the scene because your cam camera position has been changed. So today we are not going to see the GL you look at, okay? That will be the next lecture, but we will know that our camera is at position zero, zero, zero. Okay, the second thing we discussed is about the uh, at, okay? This is the look at. Where is this camera looking at? So in this case, the X axis is zero. So we are not looking on the right side, on the left side. We are exactly looking in the uh, zero, uh, which means that not left or not right on the X axis, uh, not up, not down on the uh, Y axis, but inside the Z axis, into a point which is located at minus 100. Why do we do this? Okay, this is very important now. And we will test it. These, we will change these values to see how do they work, okay? So uh, actually I'm at zero, zero. So this is where my eye is and I'm looking at a point at Z axis at minus 100, okay? Now, if I look at, uh, at a point uh, minus 10, it will be close by, okay? And what will happen if we change this to minus 10 or to some different value, okay? That depends on the experimentation, but it simply means, these three parameters simply means that the camera is looking into the Z axis, okay? Forget about right now for, you know, uh, just uh, hold on about this value about minus Z. If we make it plus Z, it means it will be looking into this direction, okay? The camera will be looking into this direction, but because by default in OpenGL, we set up our camera such that the Z axis is negative into the screen. So it should be negative, okay? Uh, otherwise, if you draw an object, it will be here, for example, and your camera will be looking at the opposite side. So you will not see anything and you will be confused. Okay, the last three parameters, it's the up vector, okay? And what does that mean? It means that the camera how do you rotate the camera or how do you tilt the camera, uh, etc. Okay, so uh, up vector here is only in y axis we have up. Okay, so the up vector can be zero or one. Okay, or let's say minus one, which will be rotated then in the negative direction. Okay, but any other value, for example, 2.0, 3.0, it will be always resulting in the same. Okay, it's important just to say whether. Uh, which, which, which way actually you are making it up, okay? So here, Y is up. Now, if I make the Z one up, 
what does that mean? It means that my camera, this up of the, my camera, it will be rotated into this thing. Okay, so the camera will be like tilted such that you rotate this up vector to in the exact direction. So the camera will be actually looking up. Okay, whether it works or not. Okay, that's another thing, but I'm just going to explain the GLU look at function to you. Okay, next is about, um, okay, there is a comment about zoom in, zoom out. Okay, we will see. Okay, Omar. Okay, um, so here is an example of look at what we have done here. We moved our camera four units to the right. So here is four on X axis, two units up. Okay, and uh, this is two units up and then one unit into the Z axis. Okay, so we have moved our camera and then look vector is two, four minus three, which will something like this. Sorry, uh, the, the look vector is this position okay which is two four uh, minus three so two into x axis four into y axis minus three into z axis so this point is where you're looking and uh, this point is where you are here the four two and one okay so one is z axis two up and four on the right sides and finally the up vector is two two minus one so when you have two two minus one you see you are uh, having this direction Okay, two, two minus one is giving you this direction. Now this seems, and it is of course a sort of tricky, how do you make this look up, but it will only be clear after the experimentation when you do some experiments and we are going to do these experiments soon. Okay, now uh, we have the, uh, you know, definition of frustum. Okay, frustum is what? This is actually this volume, which will be visible in the screen, okay? The things which are within this frustrum, they will be visible to your camera or they will be visible in the screen. If something is on the left side of this left, so this is the left side, uh, this wall is the right, this one is the near, that one is the far, okay? And then you have a top and a bottom, okay? So the near one you can see is here and the far one is this one much from the camera. So you can actually manage this, a size of this volume, okay? Why is it important? Because if you have so many models and you don't want to draw those models which are outside of the frustum, so it will be helpful to define this frustum, okay? Now you can see that it can be far from the camera. So the things which are here, okay? Apparently we should be able to see it, but no, we will not see it if it is near than this near plane, okay? So these six planes, they define the volume within which you are able to see the objects. So if an object is half inside the volume, half outside, for example, you will only see half of that object, okay, which is inside that volume. The other half, which is outside, will be clipped, okay? So clipping means that uh, if it doesn't fill uh, within that frustum or the 3D volume, it will be removed from drawing on the screen, okay? Now, uh, these near, far, top, uh, bottom, left, right, uh, they make very important concept and it also defines, you know, your uh, actually uh, perspective or orthographic projection. So here in this example, we have a definition of frustum, but we don't use frustum itself. Actually, what we use is either the perspective projection or the orthographic projection, okay? And the frustum is defined by these functions automatically. So what is perspective? Perspective projection we use for 3D. And I explained to you in the last lecture that how do these three things work? That if something is near the near plane, it will look bigger, but if it goes onto uh, or near the far plane, it will become smaller and smaller, just like in the real world. And the reason is because of the aspect ratio. So here, uh, even though the aspect ratio, sorry, the aspect ratio is the same, but the difference between how uh, this object, uh, object's ratio is compared to this, you know, plane, okay? So here, uh, let's say you have an object of some size, when it goes there, you see the width uh, and height, they are increasing. So the object's ratio, according to these widths and height, will become smaller and the object will be shown as smaller on the screen, okay? Now the four parameters in the GLU perspective, you have the angle, okay? What is the angle, uh, which shows actually the uh, 
range of view of the camera. Okay, so it is from top to uh, you know bottom this angle. So if you make it narrow, you will see things differently. If you make it like bigger, you will see di differently. And by differently, what I mean is like how big or small they will appear because it's again a ratio. The second thing is the aspect, which is the ratio of width to height. Okay, so this is important. Normally we have different aspects of the scenes, okay, uh, for to simulate different types of cameras. So you have wide angle cameras, you have square cameras, which have the aspect ratio of one by one, okay. Then near and far plane, these are the units in terms of open gel, how things, uh, the, the near things you can uh, show on the screen. Okay, so normally this near should be close to the camera, okay, and the far it depends. Uh, by default, if you don't apply the near and the far, I think the near will be 1 or 0 0.1 and the far, uh, well, well, we will see that. It will come if we disable it and we will see what are these values, okay? Then we have the orthographic projection. So the first one is the perspective projection, okay, which is used for 3D because 3D means what? If things are close by, okay, in the near plane, they will seem bigger if they move towards the far plane, they will become smaller in the size. And then we have the orthographic projection, which is used for 2D. And what is important about this projection is that if the things are close or if they are far, they will have the same appearance on the screen. They're actually moving from near to far, etc. It does not make any change, okay? Um, and the reason is because we define these you know, planes as parallel lines, okay? So uh, in uh, unit perspective, these lines are not parallel, okay? These two planes, okay, they are joined by non-parallel lines. So the near and far planes, these lines, the four lines, okay, here and here, they are not parallel. But here you can see that the lines between these two planes, they are parallel, okay? So it doesn't have the effect of 3D, things which are near or things which are far, they will look same. And even if you change up or down, we will see how does it change. The perspective effect will not be there. If you make this plate, for example, uh, a little bit up on the y-axis or down on the y-axis, we will see, okay, that how does it look like there is not much change in the perspective because there is no perspective. So now after understanding, you know, the uh, functions of how things look, uh, how the camera works in OpenGL, we are going to use some 3D functions, okay? So there are different, uh, you know, uh, built-in models actually, and we will check these models. So one of them is solid sphere, another is the wire sphere, okay? And each model has its own, you know, set of attributes to define the size of the model, how big or small it is, or the, uh, the number of polygons, like sl uh, slice or stacks that define how complex or how simple is that model, okay? Or how high resolution or low polygonal is that model, okay? So we have different models. And for this, today's uh, example, we are going to see the uh, this teapot, okay? So I will use the teapot model and I will explain some code and then you will have a homework based on this code, okay? So let's see the example code, which was there in the lab. Okay, if you remember, uh, we have a lab, I will upload the code and I will explain how does it work. But when we run it, we will see the output something like this. Okay, so here is that code. And uh, I will go through many steps, uh, you know, many of these lines step by step, but let me first run this code and see what is the output, then I will explain, okay? So here is um, the 3D teapot model, okay, which is generated out of this single file of uh, you know C++. The name of the file is built in 3D models. I will upload it and you will start your homework from here. Okay, uh, well, uh, the question is that all, all these shapes included in the exam, well, you remember that I don't ask about things which are about memory only, it's about understanding. So I will explain to you uh, which type of shapes will come, but the important shapes are like TVOD, okay? And uh, what are the other shapes if you see here, okay? All of these, 
wire T part solid cone. So you don't need to remember the name, but you need to understand that if I ask you to draw a wire cube, for example, to draw a wire cube, let's say, okay? So you should know what is a wire cube, okay? You should know what is a wire sphere, for example, what is a solid tetrahedron, okay? And I will give you, let's say, some options. For example, here in this table, they don't take any options, but some may take any options. And if I give you the options, you should understand what do these options mean. So in, in a sort, you need to memorize something, okay, to understand, for your understanding, okay? Okay, so this is the output for this code. Let us see this very quickly. So blood init display mode, uh, we have blood single, okay, single buffer. We are not using animation, it's just a single drawing, so single buffer is fine. Glut RGB, we are using the RGB display model. Glut depth, okay. Now here we are enabling the depth. What will happen if we not do not enable this depth? Okay, it will not look something which do we see here, okay? It will be different. How different will that be? Well, you need to test that, okay? But remember this point. Glut init window size, so this is the size. 400 pixels is the width and 300 pixels is the height. It's not exactly like one by one a square, okay? The initial window position is 400 by 400. So from top left, we go 400 uh, first right and then down. And this gives you this position to be 400 by 400. The create window is 3D model. So this is the title 3D model. Then we initialize, okay? So what do we do in the initialize initialization? Um, we have the clear color. The background color is white. 111 stands for white. So the background color is white. Then we have now two things, okay, the projection mode and the matrix mode. And actually that is something we need to uh, understand, okay. Now in the projection mode, we are talking about the camera, okay, because it's about projection. So uh, if we make any changes to the scene here, after the projection mode, it, it will be mainly about the world thing, okay. It's not about the model. And when we have the GL model view, you see the same GL matrix mode here and GL matrix mode here. So when we have the model view, model view, it means that if I make any translation or rotation, it will just move, be applied to this model, okay? And if I have another model, then that will be applied to that model, for example, okay? So you are when you are moving the models individually, you will apply to the model view. Now, remember that we have a matrix. Okay, and in order to apply the uh, uh, different transformations, okay, scaling, rotation, translation, etc., to any model, we always start from uh, you know identity matrix, okay, which means that a matrix which is like unity, which does not have any changes applied to it. So when we may uh, when we apply any rotation translation, so we apply that to the unity matrix. Now after applying any type of transformation to one model, okay? What we do is that we will make this matrix again as the identity matrix. So we we'll start from the identity matrix and then we will apply transformation to the next model starting from that matrix, okay? But let me repeat, whenever we want to make any transformation to a model, okay? So we will start from identity matrix in general. Okay, that's good for understanding because when you have identity matrix, it means that you reset everything. So from the reset position, it's easy to do the transformation. If you don't reset it and you apply transformation to a new model, it will be based on a position which you applied in the past model, okay? So that will be confusing and it will not be clear. So there is always a reference point, let's say the origin, zero, zero, zero. We start everything from the origin and we see from that origin, if the things are on the right side, on the left side, top, bottom, how far or how you know near to the camera, okay? So when we set uh, here the matrix mode to GL projection, what we, do, what we do is we load the identity, okay? Simply means that we reset our matrix. There is no transformation. Everything is at original positions. So uh, if the camera we define at 000, it will be at 000. Then we make the perspective mode. In the perspective mode, what is 91? 0 0.1 and 100. Let's go back to the slides, okay? So we see the perspective mode here. These are the four options. So the first one is angle, okay? So angle is, you know, from the top to bottom, how large or small you can see, okay? That is the first one here. 
the angle, sorry, sorry, 90 degree. Okay, so we are opening our shutter like 90 degree. Then we have the aspect ratio, the second one. Okay, aspect ratio. So we are making it the width and height to be the same. Okay, uh, although here it's not the same and we will change it. Uh, if I forget, you can make it 400 by 300 and you will see what will happen. Okay, 400 by 300 or let me try this. Okay, so here you see this image. Let me copy this image so we can compare. So I will make alt print screen to take a screenshot. I will make this here. Okay, so this is my image let me make it like here so this is the output when i have the perspective of one okay which means the width and height should be the same let's say now i close this program and i make this perspective to actual screen sizes which is 400 by 300 or it can be four by three which means width by height okay and if i run this now okay so actually what change do you see okay do you see any change well not really Okay, because the change is very small. Okay, so width by height is 400 by 300. So uh, it can be width by height or it can be one, okay, in this case, but it matters in general. So let me not, not go into this detail of the, uh, you know, aspect ratio right now, but we will continue with the next one, which is 0.1 and 100. And according to the slides, these are the near and far. So point one is for this plane and 100 is for that plane. What it means is that I want my near plane to be point, point one, which is, okay, so this now, remember, this is about the volume, okay? So this unit starts from this camera and it goes into how many units you want, okay? So point one unit from the camera, it's just like zero, very near to the camera, just in front of the camera, and 100 is the depth. Okay, so it means that this perspective will start from here. The near plane will start from here and it will go, let's say, this distance, which is 100. So from point one to 100, everything drawn here will be shown onto the screen. Okay, now we don't know where we draw the things right now, but we will change this to see how does it work. Okay, very shortly. Okay, then uh, I have initialized and after that I make my matrix mode to the model view. Why I make it model view? Because after that, after initializing, what I may be doing is the drawing function and the drawing will apply to the models. So the model automatically will be in the jail matrix mode model view, okay? So it's better that we have this model view uh, because I don't make my projection change here, okay? So this initialization, initialization is executed only once. And after that, there is only draw model. So remember that all the drawing we do after that is in the model view, which means that whatever model we will draw, it will be uh, applied to that model only. It will not change our perspective, which remains the same, okay? Now I have done the initialization, then I specify my draw model, which is the uh, drawing function, okay? The display function. I enable the depth test, I enable the lighting, and I enable light zero, okay? We will study lighting, okay, in detail in the next lecture, but briefly, uh, if you don't have lighting, we will not see things correctly, okay? It will it, see in a room without light what happens, okay? Um, so if this is, you see my output with lighting, what will happen if I disable, if I don't have any lights at all, okay? So if I run this now, okay, I don't see anything. What will happen now, instead of lighting, there is some lighting, but if I have not enabled the depth test, which means that it's not 3D. If it is not 3D, what will happen? Okay, this is what is happening. Okay, so uh, there are some experiments you need to uh, do to see these things. Okay, that is part of your homework. Okay, now we come to the main part, which is the drawing of model. Okay, and the time is uh, running, so running short. So we will just clearly, uh, quickly go through this. First, get clear. When we start this drawing function, we will clear. You remember this, okay? We will clear, which is what? Here we are passing two options. One is for the color buffer, which means that the color buffer is white, so it will make everything white in the buffer, the background. Then it will make the depth clear, so there is nothing in the depth, okay? Um, yeah, it will make it the background color. Okay, GL load identity, we will reset everything so that if I move 
my model, it will start from zero, zero, zero. Now here I translate my model, okay, because it is about model. We have set our matrix mode to model. So I translate my model to position zero, minus three, minus eight. What does that mean? If I don't translate it, let's say at all, what will happen? It will be at position zero, zero, zero. Okay, so let me start this at position zero, zero, zero. What happens is, okay, what do you see here? Mm -hmm. That's very strange. It is black, totally black, because we are inside the teapot. Okay, we are inside the teapot, so that's why it is totally black, but we need to see it from far, so we move this. We don't move it left, right. We move it a little bit down, the model, and into the screen, and that's how we see this model like here. Okay, so that is zero minus three minus eight. What will happen if I make it zero and zero? Okay, so what do you think will be happening? This is the thing, and this was the original. So when you have minus three, you see we have moved the model, model down. When you have zero, zero, it's exactly, this is the zero, zero position. We don't move the model. So it doesn't look like in 3D, okay? Next, um, I make it again minus three, okay, here. I make it again minus three, so it will look like this one, but let me move it to minus 15, for example, okay? Let me move it to minus 15 inside the z-axis. So what will happen? Okay, it has become smaller as compared to this model. Okay, now don't say that it has become up. It's still down, but because it has moved far from the screen, so uh, because of the size smaller, uh, smaller size, it seems like it is uh, now up, but it is not up actually. It has just gone into the screen. If you decrease the value further, let's say minus 20, it will go. But what happens if I change now? You see this was minus 15, okay? And remember that I can see until 100. Okay, I will stop after this example. I can see until 100, the power plane. Okay, now let's make one change. I make this 10 and I make this minus eight. Okay, the original one. I just make the power plane to be 10. Okay, the original one remains the same. So the model will remain the same and the far view. So this is the original model. Okay, and I made this to 10, no difference. Okay, now let me make this eight instead of 10. And let me close this. Victor, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Just give me one minute, let me run this example. Okay, what do you see? The difference between these two, here and here. You see this one a little bit cut. Why is it cut? because the far plane is now near the model, okay? So we cannot see the things which are beyond the far plane. Let me do one last and thing and then I will take your questions, okay? So here is seven. And if I run this, okay, this is what you see as compared to original. Why? Because the far plane, it is now near the model. So we have a model, okay? Let's say in this example, the far plane, it comes near the model here. So you see only half of it. The, the half which is behind this power plane, you don't see it. This is exactly what is happening here, okay? So we have uh, cut this thing. If I move this model further near, okay, in this example, if, if I make it six, for example, maybe my teapot is completely hidden. Okay, I will stop here. Uh, now you ask me a question, please. Just, uh, I want to say I have a lecture now. Can I can I go? I will just stop. Yeah, everyone can go. I will just take... Attendance? Okay. Sorry, attendance. Uh, just give me one minute to take the attendance. Okay, uh, just let me stop sharing the screen very quickly.